Hi there, this is David and welcome to What Happened in Trails of Azure. Here I'll be highlighting the important points of the plot, just in case you need a refresher, or if you just want to know what happened, so you can move on to the more recent titles. This is the second game in the Crossbell duology, so if you're looking for a summary of what happened in the previous game, Trails of Zero, or the Trails in the Sky trilogy, be sure to check out the links in the video description. The action occurs much more quickly in Azure than it did in Zero since the exposition is already set up, and as such, Trails of Azure opens right where Trails of Zero left off with a coordinated attack on the old Altair Lodge with the SSS and Arios McLean representing the Bracers. They're there to arrest the corrupt congressman, Chairman Hartman, as well as the recently escaped Ernest, Mayor McDowell's former secretary, who tried to assassinate him. The Crossbell Mafia, Ravash, has since broken up and their leaders are arrested too. However, taking over their old building is the Red Constellation, a Jaeger group led by Randy's uncle Sigmund and niece Shirley. The new mayor of Crossbell, Dyer de Croy, calls for a trade conference to be held in Orcus Tower between the major powers of Zemuria, most notably the Burl, Calvard, and Erebonia. However, the shit hits the fan as a group of terrorists plot to assassinate the world leaders meeting there. However, Chancellor Osborne of Erebonia had hired the Red Constellation to be his personal bodyguards, and when Shirley finds those terrorists, she massacres them in cold blood. After this turn of events, Crossbell's problems are just beginning because mysterious cryptids start appearing all over wherever azure flowers, called Pleroma grass, start to appear. Interestingly, the Pleroma grass is part of the raw materials used for manufacturing the Gnosis drugs, which caused so much trouble back in Zero. Unfortunately though, Ouroboros is still trafficking the Gnosis through the black market, and Wald, the leader of the Saber Viper street gang, demonizes due to its influence. Never one to follow orders, the Red Constellation has also gone rogue, attacking Crossbell, infiltrating the IBC, and destroying it in the process. Because of the lawlessness in the streets, Dyer de Croy declares himself president and leader of a new independent nation of Crossbell and institutes martial law throughout the city while freezing all foreign assets. This, of course, doesn't go over well with Crossbell's powerful neighbors, so Erebonia and Calvar declare war on the newly independent nation. Arios, who's been on our side this entire time, then sides with Dieter and double-crosses Lloyd in the game by kidnapping Kia and bringing her to the Croy family so they can utilize her hidden powers as the treasure of Zero. It's then revealed that Dieter and Maria Bell come from a long line of alchemists who, for 1200 years, had been trying to recreate the Mirage Septarian with the power to alter reality that was lost a long time ago. The Croy manufacture the Gnosis and orchestrated Red Constellation's attack on the city in order to stir up chaos, make the people lose their trust in the government and law, and allow Dieter to assert his dominance and take control of the entire state. The Barrage Septarian that they were trying to create is, of course, a homunculus, Kia, who used her reality-shaping powers to save Lloyd and the gang back in the finale of Trails of Zero by creating a parallel universe where Joshua, Estelle, and Renee come to their aid to save them from Joachim. If she hadn't done this, the SSS would have died. Now that Kia is kidnapped and under the control of the Croy family, Dieter is using her powers to slaughter the armies of Calvard and Erebonia, using the power of the ions that Kia controls. Ultimately, though, Lloyd and the others are able to foil Dieter and rescue Kia, turning her back into a normal girl, but not before Maria Bell declares herself as a member of Ouroboros to replace Weissman as the third Anguise, and as a final stab in the back, Lloyd is told during the climax that Ian, the lawyer who helped the team on many occasions, was actually the person who killed Lloyd's brother Guy so long ago. It seems that many years ago Guy was starting to unravel the entire sinister plot involving Arios, Ian, and the Croy family, so they had to get rid of him. This riveting plot is the reason why the duology is considered the best in the series. It's non-stop action from the get-go, and the characters are relatable and lovable. I hope that this refresher helps you to understand the events of the series as we wait for more localizations of the Trails series. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.